Hello, my friends. It's Paula. You're in my Las Vegas kitchen and we are coming up on Easter right around the corner. I decided the best way to celebrate is to make us an Easter brunch. And in fact, I'm inspired by that frittata I had at Giada last week. I had to look up a recipe. Lo and behold, I have a cookbook that is so awesome. It was a gift. Remember I told you this year I want to make recipes out of gift cookbooks. This was from my friend Austin. We went antiquing in the orange circle a few months back and he picked this up secondhand and bought it for me. It is so incredible. I will show you the step-by-step -step photos in this cookbook. It is exquisitely done. So I found not only a frittata for our Easter brunch, but I also found a delicious coffee cake made with golden delicious apples. It's called apple nut coffee cake. That's what we're going to make first. So let's talk about the ingredients for our apple nut coffee cake. It has the traditional flour, sugar, brown sugar. We've got some cinnamon. We've got some walnuts. We've got baking powder and baking soda. And then I've also got a tub of sour cream, got some eggs, got some butter. And let me see if I forgot anything else in that list. Is there anything else? I, oh, vanilla. There we go. So that's going to be our coffee cake. We're going to get that in the oven first, then the frittata. We'll talk about that when we're ready to make it. Well, friends, I have to say it's been a little while since I was standing here at the prep area. I think it was that New York cheesecake. That seems like a long time ago. So let's talk about prep steps first. I have taken three golden delicious apples and I have peeled, cored, and sliced them thin. Then I toss them with two tablespoons of sugar. So I'm just gonna set those aside. We're gonna use those for a topping on our coffee cake. And then the next step is we're gonna make a wonderful old fashioned streusel. I love streusel topping on everything. So the first thing we're gonna to add to our streusel is one cup of chopped walnuts. And then I've got a quarter cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Let me just sort of smush that in there. Two thirds cup of flour. And this is a teaspoon of cinnamon. So that's all my dry ingredients. Let me put all those together first with just my little wooden spoon, toss those a little bit, and then we're gonna crumble in a half a stick or four tablespoons of butter. And that's gonna be the streusel. Oh my gosh, so aromatic already, and I haven't even done anything. <laughs> Who doesn't love cinnamon? There goes my four tablespoons of butter in, and then I'm just gonna smash this together, make a streusel out of it. All right, so let me get this set. I'm going to turn my oven on 350 degrees and I'm going to get my mixer out because we need to make a cake batter. All right, friends, we are going to make a beautiful, rich cake batter. I have two softened sticks of butter and to that I'm gonna add a cup and a half of sugar. I'm gonna do that all nice and fluffy and then we have a bunch of other ingredients to add. So mixer goes on. Ooh, don't listen. <laughs> Fluffy factor achieved. Next, I'm adding a 16 ounce tub of sour cream. Once that's mixed in, I'm adding two teaspoons of vanilla extract to the batter. Before I move on, just checking in with you and saying hello. We've got the four eggs to go in and then I'm gonna incorporate my dries. See you when that's all done. As I said, I incorporated the four eggs and my flour mixture, and once they were all incorporated, I just beat the batter for a minute, and this is what we have, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that bowl of cake batter, would you? So, next step is going to be assembly. I have greased a 13 by nine pan, so I'm gonna put my batter in there. We're gonna layer on the apples and the streusel. See you in a minute. 
Cameraman Dale was over here and he said, this is one heck of a lot of batter. And he's right. It's a lot of cake batter. <laughs> I guess this serves a crowd. But you know what? If you're making it for a brunch at Easter, maybe you have a crowd. So that works out. So I've got a 13 by 9 pan greased and I'm adding my batter to it. I've got my apples and my streusel standing by for some assembly. All right. Let's get that spread to the edges. And then the apples go in a layer all touching one another because the recipe says if you don't do that, the cake will bubble up above the apples. And of course, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> we want a beautiful presentation on this. All right, apples are gonna go in and starting at the edge like so and some overlaps. So I'll be doing this for <laughs> five minutes or more. <laughs> well, you don't have to watch me do this. I will finish up the apples and then I'll be back to put the streusel on and we'll, we'll do that together. Whew, I was a little worried. I wasn't sure I was going to have enough apple slices to cover the whole cake, but I think I'm about there. All right. So the last step on the assembly is to grab my streusel and just sprinkle it over the top like so. So the oven's already at 350. We're just going to bake this for 45 or 50 minutes. And I know I'm going to wish I had smell-o-vision because the smell of the walnuts, the cinnamon, the brown sugar, and the apples is probably going to be worthy of being bottled. <laughs> All right, folks, I have to say, even before this goes in the oven, how great does this look? Seriously, wow, good housekeeping. I think you did me proud on this one. In she goes. <laughs> what do you think? Oh my gosh, we need the smell of vision. This is so beautiful and smells so amazing. It's brown sugar, cinnamon, apples. I can't wait to dig into the coffee cake. Where's my cup of tea? Let's have this. <laughs> but no, our brunch actually calls for another main dish, and that's going to be our frittata made with asparagus, tomatoes, onions, and cheese. Let's talk about the frittata. All right, friends, I'm back with my good housekeeping cookbook, and we have opened up the pages to the frittatas and the eggs. This one is an asparagus flavored one, tomatoes, onions. It's fantastic looking in the picture. Let's see if we can recreate it. So we're going to use eight eggs as the base, of course, a little bit of flavoring with salt and marjoram, and then the veggies. We're gonna do asparagus, onion, tomato and Jarlsberg cheese. Not a lot of ingredients in this, but oh boy, I can't wait to enjoy this at our brunch table. Let's get making that frittata. Prep steps for the frittata. A little bit of veggie cutting up had to be done. I've got 12 ounces of asparagus that I cleaned and cut into two inch pieces. I have a medium onion that I just sliced thinly. I have a medium tomato that I cut into eight wedges and then removed the seeds. And then I have one cup of freshly uh, shredded Jarlsberg cheese. I hope I said that right. It looks and smells incredibly savory. And then for flavoring, really simple in this frittata, it's a half a teaspoon of marjoram and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's it. So let me get out a frying pan and let's get started with our frittata. Fun fact, I actually had to go buy a 10 inch oven safe nonstick skillet because I did not own one. How have I managed without one? I think I had one years ago and it probably was junky and I threw it out. Anyway, I've got uh, two tablespoons of butter that I'm melting in my brand new skillet and in go the asparagus stalks and the onion. And those are going to cook over medium heat until they get a little bit tender crisp. The recipe says that's going to be about 10 minutes. So wow, that looks great already, doesn't it? <laughs> Yum. I can't wait to pour that egg mixture over top of this guy, huh? 
All right, medium heat, it's not sizzling very much. I, oh, there it goes, I hear it now. Turn that up a tad. All right, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Well, hey, 10 minutes and look how this sweated down. We've even got some light browning going on here. So while this was cooking, I took eight eggs and I added one quarter cup water, some marjoram and the salt that we talked about. And then there's only one other ingredient, which is half of this Jarlsberg cheese. So let me pour that in. The other half is gonna go on as a topper and we're gonna brown this frittata in the broiler when we're all done. So just stir this together and this is going on top of my veggies. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so excited about this meal. On top it goes like so. Check that out everybody in the overhead. And then let's make sure we have all that eggy goodness. So then I have my eight tomato wedges, which I just am supposed to position manually kind of around in a circle, like so. It's all about presentation when you're cooking. I, I'm definitely loving the color. All right, sort of like spokes in a wheel, more or less. All right, I have to put a lid on this and this is a new pan, it doesn't have its own lid, so I had to borrow a lid a little bit bigger. 10 more minutes at medium heat for the frittata to cook through. We'll see you then. Well, that took more like 12 or 13 minutes than 10, but check this out, ladies and gentlemen. It's a puffy beauty. <laughs> All right, uh, my uh, extra half cup of the Jarlsberg cheese goes on top. And then I've got my broiler on high and it's just gonna go under the broiler just to get the cheese to bubble. And we will call this done. All right, there we go. All right. Over to the broiler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Check out this masterpiece. All I can say is, wow, when do we eat? I will see you at the table. Well, I feel like I earned this. Check out my Easter brunch plate. I got some mega strawberries at the grocery store this morning. I got a couple little sausage links that I threw in the oven real quick and easy. Meanwhile, I cannot wait to try my asparagus, tomato, and cheese frittata. Perfect doneness. Oh my goodness, that is so good. I love everything in it. So of course I knew I would love it and I do another bite. <laughs> mm. That was baby asparagus, very thin and tender. It just melts in your mouth. The Jarlsberg cheese is fantastic and the doneness is ideal. I actually love how it looks when you slice it with the, with the little circular asparagus. Oh, yum. All right, cake time because I can't wait. So I have a little bite of the cake, the apple, and the streusel. It is so moist looking, I can't even believe it. Mm. Still faintly warm. The apples and the streusel superb wow you know that was a very rich cake there's a lot of butter and sour cream in it but it is fantastic tasting not heavy at all again second bite mm. two absolute winners i love them both oh can't wait for cameraman dale to have a bite of both of these Fantastic brunch, 
actually, this would be a fantastic dinner. This is so delicious, both these recipes. Thank you, Austin, for the cookbook, Good Housekeeping. You did it again, twice. Two thumbs up on that. Ugh. Thank you all for watching, for being with me, and I certainly hope, and so does Dale, that you have a very blessed Easter this year, Passover, or whatever you are celebrating. Happy spring! <laughs> Make this fantastic frittata. Make that coffee cake and take it to a picnic. It's fantastic. Bye, everybody.